Today I'm going to talk about a rain tank that we've just recently put in to our property here in Calgary, Alberta. We've been working on this property for about five years now and it's about a 5,000 square foot postage size lot. Throughout the last five years we've been doing rainwater harvesting, gardens, food forests, passive solar greenhouses um, and we're kind of getting to the end of our project here. But there were two roofs that we, we, I really, really wanted to harvest the rainwater off of. Is the outdoor kitchen and the rear hip roof right behind here, which were all flowing into the hardscape under the kitchen and causing all sorts of problems. Being that we're in such a small property, we were kind of out of space, so I didn't really know where I was going to put that last uh, rainwater storage system. So Jordan Hosh from gnomeofmyown.com uh, has quite a bit of experience with putting in underground rain tanks. And so when I approached him about uh, putting in this rain tank, he came up with the idea of putting it underneath some existing patio stone. So I'm going to go through how we actually put in uh, this rain tank underneath a patio. So it actually just looks like a patio, but underneath we've got about 3,000 liters of rainwater stored there. Um, and show you how the overflow works, uh, as well as how we gain access to that water. So over here, we've got um, this patio. It used to be lawn right here. So we've, we excavated out down about 65 centimeters um, below the grade that was here uh, when we started. And we're going to put these giant culverts into the ground, four of them exactly. And we're going to get about two to two and a half cubic meters of water storage in this area, maybe a little bit more. Um, and it's going to sit underneath the surface of paving stones. And so this will just look like a patio, but underneath it, it's going to have a massive lens of water. Now, in order to get this lens of water to function and flow through the system as we want it to into our swales, what we did over here was we put in, we drilled a a core through the concrete wall and this is going to allow a pipe to fit into the pond liner which is what's going to line this hole and when the tank overflows this is going to have a pipe coming up a standpipe which will set the water level inside there and when that water level gets too high the water will flow down here through a pipe on the edge of this step here and then into the swale within the garden um, and hydrate this whole system one of the most important things that, that uh, occurred when we were uh, excavating this is we wanted to make sure that there was no organic matter. So organic matter is the black stuff that you find in the soil. Um, it, it's what makes soil soil. So we wanted to go down to what's called native material or clay because that material doesn't heave very much in the wintertime. And that's a really important consideration when we're putting stuff in ground is we don't want um, a surface to heave up and down. So we went down to clay and then um, if you look just over here um, you can see some of the material that we use so we actually lined the pit with uh, a fabric or a felt so that that would protect the pond liner and then underneath that was pond liner and then another layer of felt and we actually put these giant culverts in to uh, into the hole which is what creates the void or the space that holds the rainwater. So underneath me right now is four culverts, gravel, sand, and then this layer of pavers on top of it. So like I was saying, the pavers act as a rainwater harvesting surface. And right at the edge here, just behind this wooden seat, we've got a gutter. And this plastic gutter has a 2% grade towards the back of the patio, uh, at which point there's a hole in the actual gutter itself, and it drains into the tank that I'm standing on top of. Now to gain access to the water um, outside of when it's overflowing into the garden, we have an inexpensive uh, sump pump here. And when we were building the patio, so we took a little bit of 12 inch pipe, we cut it to the perfect height, and we perforated it with a drill. Uh, and it just so happened that we had these little pavers kicking about the house. So this butts up nicely to the bricks. A sump pump is going to be placed down into the hole with a wire uh, and is going to allow us to run a hose out of this, uh, this sump right here. And if you remember when we were building the tank, we actually uh, put a, a submerged sump at the bottom so the water will generally flow down to this area so we can actually extract all of the water right before winter out of this area so there's nothing in here that's going to freeze. 
you know, after a couple of rains, this tank is already full. So it's, you know, our, our, our tank is already serving us. Um, so we took this little paver right here, which you can get at any garden store, and we just cut a little notch into it. So that's going to allow the hose to come out. We've got a little drawstring so that we can inspect what's going on inside the tank. And we can just drop our sump pump into the bottom of the sump, replace the lid, and this stays here all summer long. And now we've got access to that water. So when we want it, we can just literally plug in the pump right here. The pump fires up, and then we've got access to uh, a standard hose, which we can use um, to water. Now, the main purpose for the water that we've harvested here is the greenhouse. Um, for those of you who've been checking out our blog, we have a passive solar greenhouse, um, which is a huge water hog. And it's been the last thing on the site that, that continues to use city water. So this is going to be how we supply that passive solar greenhouse now with rainwater.